You are watching a ChinaImportal.com video tutorial importing watches from China. In this video you will learn what you must include in a watch product specification, unit price differences um, for different product qualities, tooling costs, prototype and sample development, product regulations and quality control. Let's get started. A lot to go through here. All right, so. Uh, Suppliers in every industry, including the watch industry, they make the product according to the buyer specification. There's no real difference between supplier A and supplier B in terms of, say, the quality they can offer. Instead, it really comes down to uh, what you specify, the, the spec sheet. Now, to get uh, your product right, you need to give them a spec sheet. They will not help you. Uh, give you a template or anything like that. Instead, they expect you as the buyer to already know how you define quality for, for say, a wristwatch. So, what you must cover in a watch spec sheet is, for example, the watch case. Now, the watch case, you have the design. You, need to, you, you may use, say, uh, a CAD file, a 3D file, or uh, you, can use, uh, you, can, you can actually have a physical reference sample. You can even send them a watch and say, hey, replicate this. Or you can, you can create a, a, a drawing, a 2D drawing. Um, you, you can have, say, a mock-up, a 3D printed mock-up. There are many ways you can represent the design of the watch case. So you have free hands. As long as you can communicate the design, it's okay. If, if you can understand, the supplier should be able to understand. Um, you also have the material. You have stainless steel. Uh, ceramic watches, uh, zinc alloy, different types of stainless steel, wooden watches, uh, plastic watches. So th this must be specified. Now, the watch case material is pretty much what decides the price. Now, you can have a watch uh, with the same design. You have two watches with the same design and say the first watch is made of zinc alloy which will only cost you, say, five, six dollars, while the very same design in, in stainless steel uh, is gonna, going to cost you a lot more than that, say, 18, 19 dollars. So this is a huge price difference. And of course, you can't compare prices between different suppliers unless you know which uh, material the quote is based on. The one more reason why you need a spec sheet. Okay, so the movement is the core component in every watch. You have quartz movements, uh, automatic movement, mechanical movements. Right, and a movement can cost anything from a, a one dollar or less than that to thousands. Okay, so you need to specify. You need to tell them which movement that you want them to to, to use, because they will procure they, they will procure the movement that you tell them to. So as said, you get what you specify, uh, and you get what you pay for. When it comes to the glass, you have mineral glass and sapphire. That's those are the two main options. You have different treatments you can ha get coating and uh, like AR coating on the front and the inside so you can customize it in different ways indexing it can be printed it could be uh, updale steel cut out for example different ways uh, to design the indexing mm, but you need to communicate to your supplier how that you want them to to well to to make the indexing for you the clock face can be designed with a logo, uh, that's where the indexing goes. Uh, you, it, it can be plated, gold plated, IP rose gold and so on. Many customization options for the clock face. And the back plate, uh, you can have a cut out to create a 3D effect, or you can have an engraving, which say, uh, describing the movement, your logo and so on. So you see, you can basically create the product the way you want it, as long as, you can, as, as, long as it can be communicated as a spec sheet it can be done okay now there are limits though to how far you should go when it comes to customizing the design now the movement is of course not customized that is, is standardized so you will be limited by the movement and this will decide the layout of say the clock face how many hands you can use the thickness of the watch is decided by the movement so the you begin with the movement and then you design the watch. That's pretty much that, that's, uh, that's a cornerstone of, of watch design. You start with the movement. Now, you have a lot, of more, lot, lot more components. Say, the watch case. Uh, maybe you want a custom design watch case. That's fine, but do you need to have custom design hands and the crown and, and the clasp and so on? Well, maybe you do. And that's fine. It's just that 
if the, the more components you have that are OEM or customized rather than ODM or factory standard, uh, the longer it will take to develop your product and the more it will cost you because you have to invest in tooling. Okay? Now, the watch is not everything. You also have the straps. You have to decide do you want to go for an ODM strap that's a standard strap or an ODM that's customized. Now, for ODM, you can get away with an MOQ of, say, 100, 200 pieces, while OEM, uh, then you're looking at the 500 pieces, maybe. When it comes to the materials, it's the same. You've got leather straps. You've got different kinds of leathers, like 40, 50 different types of leather. So you need to read up on leather qualities before you even get engaged with this. Uh, you have NATO straps, as textile straps, nylon straps, uh, braided straps, uh, plastic straps, rubber straps, stainless steel straps, zinc alloy straps. So you've got a lot of, uh, a lot of variety. And it can be printed, engraved, and you can also customize the clasp and the ring. The same goes for the packaging. You can choose between ODM and OEM packaging. The difference is the ODM MOQ is normally like 300 to 500 pieces for an ODM packaging, while it's 10 times that for OEM, 3,000 to 5,000 pieces. So if you're just starting up, maybe you should avoid OEM. Uh, Design, you can customize the design, but you must provide a complete layout file in that case. When it comes to the material, uh, pff, that is also to be specified either by you or the supplier. And packaging, including ODM packaging, can normally be branded with your logo. Right. So, unit prices. I touched upon this briefly uh, a minute or two ago. Now, as you can see, what really makes a difference is, is, is the the material of the watch case. So here we got, say, uh, we start from the bottom and we go up, like a zinc alloy case with a no-name movement, 45 USD. And this is assumed that it's the same, that this assumes that it's the same design. Okay? And one step above that, we have a zinc alloy case, alloy case with a Citizen Miyota Japanese movement. It's a high-quality movement. It's cheap quartz movement, but they work they keep on ticking forever. So even though it's, it's, it's a low price tag, Citizen is a very reliable movement. And then we have a stainless steel case with a no-name movement. Still, you see it's a major leap now. It, it jumps up almost $10, like 200%, up to, up to 14 to 20 USD. So you see here that what is really decisive when it comes to, when, when it comes to pricing is not so much the movement, but the material of the watch case. Okay? Tooling. Now, when you engage in OEM prototyping, which means that you get a prototype manufactured according to your specification, be that a physical sample or a 3D design, you will need to pay for a watch case mold. That's the bare minimum, two to three hundred USD. Now, it's up to you to decide what happens after this, but you have the crown mold, uh, 120 to 200, as the crown is used to adjust the time. Uh, the custom, uh, custom hands, um, which is less costly, but still 80 to 150. You have uh, the clock face, which is 40 to 100. And the custom backplate engraving. 20 to 40 USD. So the more you customize a product, the more you have to pay. Now remember, these are fixed costs. Like you don't have to pay these for every order. This is this this is this, these are fixed costs, one time, uh, one time payments. But still, if you want to keep costs down, you have to consider uh, how far you should go with product customization. And again, these lessons can also be applied for other categories. Okay. Prototype development. Now, you are expected to pay 100% upfront for the mold and the sample. Of course, I just um, explained. And uh, the 2D, a 2D rendering should be provided by the supplier before production starts. And that's just to show, like, it's sort of like a reconfirmation from the supplier to, to, to demonstrate that they actually understand uh, your spec sheet. If there's any misunderstanding, that's of course a lot easier to correct on a, on, on a 2D rendering like a Photoshop file as compared to a real sample. Now, uh, development time, two months for the first revision and say two to four weeks for every consecutive revision. And you should, you should estimate two to three revisions. That's what it normally takes. So you're looking at two to four months, including revisions. Now, I've been dealing with projects that have been taking a lot longer than that. So it really depends if, if, if you have a new design that's like untested and so on. 
then it can take a lot longer than that. It can take six months or more. So, product compliance. Now, as even though watches are, well, it's not a risk product, but you still have to comply with various regulations. So if you're based in the US uh, or the European Union, Australia, you need to listen up now. First, you have substance regulations, which refers to, say, heavy metals restrictions or chemicals. This is, applies to the watch case and the strap, right? Um, a substance restriction can, it, it can ban a substance or you can set a limit. It can say that you can only, it can only contain uh, this many ppms of, say, uh, lead or cadmium or mercury, right? Many suppliers in Asia, well, China, cannot comply with overseas regulations. So you have to be careful. You have to verify that they, they have like the, some sort of track record of making products for, uh, for these markets because they're more regulated than other markets. And if you import a product that's non-compliant, um, the customs can seize your goods. So stakes are pretty high. And you will not get any, there's no insurance that will cover that. So that means you lose your entire investment. Boom, just like that. Okay, labeling requirements. Um, C mark, we mark, so on. Uh, country of origin. Now, labeling requirements for watches are quite interesting because you normally label the watch according to uh, the movement origin. That's why you see made in Japan a lot, even though they actually made in Shenzhen in China. Uh, but you rarely see made in China watches. Even though China is like Shenzhen is, is, is assembling, I don't know, 95% of the watches on the planet or something like that. Uh, but there is an exception. For every other product, it's, it's the origin country of the, like the assembly country. Uh, but I guess, I guess the watch industry has been pretty good at lobbying this. Right, document requirements uh, could be a GCC, a general certificate of compliance, a technical file as in the EU. Um, yeah, it's a story, it's, it's a di di different, different topic, but you, need, you may need to draft documents to prove compliance. And then you have lab testing. Now lab testing is, as far as I know, not mandatory for watches. Uh, and that being said, you may still want to consider to get your product lab tested because it's the only way to verify that you're not importing a product that's non-compliant. And if the authorities need to prove compliance and they can do spot checks, then this is the only way to prove that. It's the only way to prove that you're importing a compliant product. Quality control. Now, before you make the final payment, you need to get your product quality control. And some suppliers that I've been working with, they have a defect rate that's practically 0%. That's, that's exceptional. That's great. That's amazing. Uh, and then you have suppliers that have a defect rate of 30 to 40%. And the problem is that you don't know, especially when you place your first order. So you have to submit, you have to send a quality inspection agency to the factory to check up on the goods before you make the payment, before the shipping. Because you, you can't really return goods to a supplier. It doesn't work that way. Now, what do you have to check for watches? A, you do a visual inspection. You check the watch case for scratches, for bad polishing, fingerprints, other things you don't want. Uh, and the same thing for, for, uh, for the watch strap. Dimensions. Um, you, Dimensions, you don't only need to check that for a few units because these are molded molded products or cut out. So there's like there's no big tolerance. If if it's you don't have one watch case that's four point two millimeters and then the, the next one is like four point six, it doesn't 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 work like that. Oh centimeters, not millimeters. That'd be a very small watch. Uh, but yeah, point made. Okay. And uh Functional tests should be executed in a lot larger quantity, and that is primarily to test the movement and uh, the battery. Now, it's like these movements, they, they have a very low defect rate. I have never, ever seen any issues with the watch movements. Then again, we only deal with Swiss and Japanese movements, but I've never seen any issues with that. We never had any issues with the movements. Now, I have seen issues with batteries. Uh, supplies using like half deplete, half used batteries, second-hand batteries, and of course that's not a good thing because then a battery should should last like two years if it's a quartz watch, and you're just pissing your customers off if 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 the watch is is stops moving off like two three months, and they may even return the product for that reason because they think it's broken. So that's one one thing to one thing to check. Water pressure. Most suppliers they have a water well, like water pressure devices to check the water pressure improve 
that the watch is waterproof. Now it's up to you to specify to the supplier that is th that the watch should be say 3 ATM, 5 ATM, 10 ATM. Um, you have to be specific. And packaging, you also check the packaging. You can you can take this further. You you should also like check the components. Are they using the right movement? Uh, you, document the product, take photos, check the logo, check the prints, check the engravings, drop tests, uh, check the gla glass hardness. There are many ways to test a watch, and you should check check the what like test the watch from every angle. Shipping options. Now, if you ship say below 200 kilos, I say air freight. Uh, because watches tend to have a quite quite a high value and high profit margins too, so you want to get them on the market as quickly as possible. Now, if you ship a larger volume, say four or five thousand pieces, uh, the volumes m may be significant enough to to uh, to, con to consider sea freight as an option. Now, if you want to learn more about importing watches from Asia. Go to chinaimportal.com slash ebook and get your free ebook right now. In the ebook, you will learn how to import and launch almost any product using a tested four step process and how to identify qualified suppliers in the watch industry on Alibaba and global sources. You will also learn how to import private, la private labeling products and protect your IP and the best methods for managing shipping and customs procedures in the United States, the European Union, and other markets. Now, go to ChinaImport.com slash ebook and get your copy right now.